Hello, I am Jeffrey Wright, and you're listening to Infinity Rewatch. I'm lying. I'm not Jeffrey Wright, but I wish I was. I'm just Andrew Fantasia. You'll have to make do with me. Hi, everybody. I got to say, you know, that was pretty close, but I do love Jeffrey Wright's voice. I mean, I wish he would just say my name like, hello, Ryan J. Whitehead, and I look forward to hearing your show. Like something, I don't know. It's 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 so unique to him, but it I love is. it. Um, and that, he's, he's the kind true. of person that you would call, like you would ask him to to do your voicemail for you. You mm-hmm. know, like mm-hmm. Ryan Whitehead can't come to the phone right now, but please leave your name and ask. What if? <laughs> Honestly, I hope that he gets to do that voice in like many more movies. Like. I'm talking like I, I want him to get to the transition where we see him in movies as a silhouette. I've said it before, but I got I, I need to see more of him doing it. It's fantastic. Yeah, man. Well, we're going to see his beautiful face in about a week's time when No Time to Die comes out. Ooh, oh, boy. Felix Ryder is coming back. Finally, for the first time since 2008, we get some Felix Leiter goodness. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to have to make do with this Totally boring episode of What If, where nothing happened and the game was not changed in any way, right? It was totally terrible. I mean, like, they didn't listen to us at all. They just decided to do a whole other episode about nothing and then just cut, cut it, and that's it. It's terrible. It's terrible, I tell you. So um, for those listening at home, if you were, uh, you know, interested at all in winning the lottery, uh, just tweet at Crusader Online, Ryan J. Whitehead, and ask him for the numbers because last week... This man called episode eight pretty much to a T and me being the completely wrong cynic that I was, I was like, that's absolutely ridiculous, Ryan. I can't believe you'd even suggest such a thing. (laughs) (laughs) Most unorthodox. Uh, But uh, I was, I ate my words yesterday because you did. What happened? Oh my God. It was all hell broke loose in the best way possible. To be fair, I wish we would have got there a little sooner and spent a lot more time throughout that process because one episode was not enough. And to be fair, it, this show finally had that episode that kind of like inched you forward slowly as like these events were unfolding. And it was awesome. Like we're in this post-apocalyptic world um, you know, and it's the what if episode where Ultron, um, where Ultron completes his vision, his vision, both all pun intended. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then, yeah, Envision like gets the infinity stones, totally wrecks Thanos in one quick move. And then launch, they launch all the nukes and oh man, and all hell breaks loose. It is, it is quite literally the Ultron imperative played out to the full, full experience. And amazingly enough, Hawkeye and Widow survive. But what I love about it is, is it's you get the Ultron Imperative story, but you also get the Uatu comic book story, where like he, it, he not not to the full event, but to the point where he has to be forced to intervene. And I believe his actions are going to result in a uh in something big uh something very big and they kind of teased it there's a lot of teasing in this episode uh that i noticed uh first of all they threw in the red guardian shield which i love uh and i gotta point this out sir Uh, i'm rambling a bit and i'll give you your opportunity to throw in some sense here um but the big one i want to cover is they brought back zola and what i love about it is they totally alluded to something that I'm pretty happy about, which is like they're, they made copies of Zola. That's that's a fact. So just because the U.S. station that he was in blew to Kingdom Come, that means that he is still alive, potentially somewhere. Uh, it could be even um, Zemo has him because Zemo was at the same facility that uh, that uh, that the uh, Winter Soldier program was. So it's very likely he he has a copy of Zola. And I love that. I love the possibility that we could get more Zola back. Ooh, Zola. Not a scratch, Doctor. Not a scratch. He's coming back. We know he is. There's still more evil to be done and Shrudel to be eaten. And Zola's going to be there for both of them. Um, Oh, boy. Okay. I think the first thing um, that I, I should say just to get it off my chest right now is 
if they only ever make one action figure from what if i hope it's mega awesome ultron with the cape and the big staff and the six infinity stones in him because that is just one of the he looks like such a final boss mm-hmm. right like it looks you don't like, want you don't want uatu in his cosmic armor i love me some uatu but i i just love the way the stones look you know, I love the, the just the rainbow color of them is just so appealing to me. And then seeing them in this Ultron uh, with with the even scarier Ultron armor. And now he's got a cape. I'm just like, I am there. I am so there. He's basically General Grievous, but a little bit more buff with the stones. I I cannot ask for more. Uh, but Uatu and his armor was also pretty cool. And I love the fact that Uatu has just become the central figure now. Uh, and he... <laughs> Okay, so so the Avengers are dead. All right, fine. And the nukes are going off. And uh, those two survived. Hawkeye and Black Widow survived because whatever. Maybe they were in a bunker. Um, are we to believe that they are not only the last Avengers, but the last humans? Like, what's, what's going of, on there? Um, I feel like there was a scene where they... they referred to like there's like some survivors but it does seem like they're the last bits of humanity it just seems that way yeah it kind of it is scary but i mean which begs the question like how did they survive like how on god's green earth did they survive we're like because that and that's the other thing that bothers me about this like this could have been a two episode build up and you could have really played out some cool stuff with that. Um, but yeah, no, yes, they, it does seem that way. And it, you know, I agree with you. They could have built this out more. And I feel like even more so now that I learned, because I was looking up the episode today to to figure out a couple things. And apparently they're not going to 10 episodes. They're only going to nine. So apparently there's only one left. Oh, there's one more left, eh? Hmm. So to me, that makes it even more baffling. Like, who sat there and made that choice? Party Thor. We're going to do Party Thor when there's only two episodes left. Uh, I I don't know, but I... I mean... Can we I, all agree? Can we all agree that Party Thor was almost a waste of an episode? Yes. If it were <laughs> not for seeing super mega awesome death christ ultron at the end there uh, there's really nothing left to take away from that now granted i think it would be kind of cool if the final episode of this uh involves snippets of each world if the watcher can get strange supreme you know can he get a party thor can he get captain carter can he get a zombie thanos whatever like is he gonna recruit his own multiverse avenger team to go fight ultron like how is this gonna work now um and if they did that and if they made every episode uh play a part then i think i can sit back and be like all right i'm cool with this i'm cool with all of them because uh they all ended up being a bit more relevant than we thought they were going to be, even though we, I went into the show not expecting relevance at all. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, no, I, I, well, here's the thing though. We kind of did get all the pieces because like when, so let's get to the, the real nitty gritty of the scene here. So Ultron successfully wipes out everything. Like he, he just literally wipes out every little thing and he finally has peace in silence and um and then he hears the watcher and then i love that because i love how they visually did it how he kind of like breaks the fourth wall of the watcher literally Mm -hmm. um and he breaks through it and the battle is just epic the epic cosmic marvel proportion which is what you want um and so through that battle he actually goes through the different episodes that we've traveled through so that does happen um but i kind of agree with you like so you're kind of saying that you want to see like maybe like the characters right like you want all the characters to team up and do a thing 
Yes, and I, I kind of want to see that, but I don't. And I tell you why, because I think what we should see is an attempt to reassemble the Avengers, but it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of get a taste of it with Party Thor and like showing that, you know, our, uh, the, the prime, the, the prime, Earth Prime or whatever you want to call it, uh, that, that, that reality has everything to make it go right, right? Whereas this is obviously everything to make it go wrong. Um, so, yeah, I, if he even, I would like to see him try, but I don't want to see like an Avengers team up moment. Because again, the closer you get to that, the further, or the, the, the more you take away from that the, the moment you take away from Endgame, right? Because, mm -hmm. like, I will I will say again that I haven't said in a long time, but I'll say it now. Um, after Endgame was done, there was such a moment with my brother of like that was it, like, like that was a journey. Like we look back at the Infinity Saga after that movie, and we had an emotional moment because like we go back to think about all the movies we watched together leading up to it and then having my brother move through through the middle of it to only come back to us watching you know um like ragnarok and then eventually we like we both saw endgame around the same time um but we didn't see it together but we had that moment of like man like that's it mm -hmm. so i feel like if you do it too soon you and i think it is i think i think at this point this is the kind of second act where it's like they try to get it to work, but it doesn't quite work yet. And so I feel like, I feel like what's going to happen is, is like maybe there will be deaths in this again, uh, but they'll win, but at a cost kind of thing. Yeah. And I, I feel the same way as you and Nick. I don't want them to tarnish the power of Endgame, um, But I feel like if we got a grouping together in what if, it yeah. wouldn't uh, it, like it, it would be fine because what if feels it still feels so separate, you know, and it's animated, so it feels like it would mm -hmm. it would not uh, fall into that trap, uh, and it, especially because these are such different people. If it was Strange Supreme and and uh, Peggy Carter, and like maybe I don't know the really angry Ant Man who's killing people, like I I don't know, just just people plucked from the what if stories. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of this universe being one where everything goes wrong. Again, I couldn't find the fulcrum, Ryan. And it was, uh, it makes me so agitated when I can't find the fulcrums here. What went wrong in this world that made Ultron win? Cause I couldn't, I know watcher is explaining it, but it, I, I don't understand what went wrong that he was able to win. Yeah, I think it was just that he was able to succeed in uh, building Vision. That's what went wrong. He so Tony built Vision, but then no, no, no. Tony didn't even they didn't even get a chance to save Vision. Ultron just had him the whole time and built him. Ultron just built him to begin with. Yeah, that's what okay. happens in Age of Ultron, right? Yeah. He starts building Vision, but the Avengers ended up intercepting him, taking Vision. And programming it based on Jar like uh, on Jarvis, right? And then in this one, the the Vulcrum point, which I just learned a word today. Uh, <laughs> that point it was that what if Ultron finished Vision? Okay, that's what it is. All right, thank you. So it's uh, so that whole scene where they they uh, they have the chase and Captain America is on the motorcycle and they they get Vision's body. So that mm -hmm. doesn't succeed. And now here he just, he builds him. He, Ultron puts his consciousness in his body and he's like, okay, here I am. Uh, all right. Okay. That makes, that makes sense now. So yeah, something about having that body made him able to kill the, because it is a power, a more powerful body than the body Ultron actually has, which is just the silver and red body. Exactly. Okay. Gotcha. All right, and there's yeah, there's the Infinity Stone in there, so that helps. Okay, so that cool, that makes sense now. That 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 settles that for me. Um, and I think that I kind of wish they had shown something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I just wish they had made those better in all the episodes. 
you know, yeah. made them very clear. Uh, I feel like mm-hmm. every one of these episodes should start with a scene that is word for word, shot for shot from the MCU and then have something go wrong so that we can see that. Um, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. I feel like if you're going to do what if stories, that should be how you start them off. Do you like a cold open where it's like, I know exactly what the scene is because I know the MCU and then show us the thing going wrong and then have your opening credits and then have the episode. Well, to be fair, they kind of do that. I mean, you know, you look at the Black Panther episode or sorry, the Killmonger episode, and it starts off with the scene, the famous scene for Iron Man one. Yes. Right. Um, and Captain Carter was uh, the same thing. Maybe I agree with you that it needs to play out a bit more as if it, like you're catching up with the pacing of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and even in that, that Killmonger can... thing, like I think the more, I think we, we could have stood to take a few more steps back and be like, what changed for Killmonger to make him decide to be there in Afghanistan? Yeah. I I think I think what, there's a disconnect. The, 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 I, I think I can define what the problem is, but I can't define how to fix it. Yeah. The, the, the problem is is the this is the first animated experience, and what makes it a problem is it still feels very disconnected from the moments that we remember from the MCU, and a solution could have been. Uh, a solution could have been they actually play out the scene from the movie and then just as the moment, the what if moment's about to happen, slowly change, transition the anim- to animation. Ooh, and that okay. way there's a better kind of connection. I don't know if if that would be the final, I don't know if that would be like the final product. Like, I don't know if that final product would still help its, its problem. Um, but in the end, I think it, it might help personally, because it, I think what would be cool is if you play the scene, if you play the scene from the movie and then you have the silhouette of Uatu in the background and then like, yeah, or like, and that's the thing. And then the cool thing is like you shift to his perspective and everything turns into the animation. And that way there's, there's a better connect because that, I think that's what's missing is like, yeah, they recreated some of these scenes. But it's so different because of the animation and, and we're entering such a new perspective. But to be fair, like, I don't know. It's, it, there's, there, is a, there is a disconnect with this show. And, and I, I know that's the problem, but I don't know, like, how to fix it. Like, I don't know how you would fix it. I like your idea, though. I think, that's, I think that works perfectly. I think that's a great way to show it. Uh, and I think uh, if Jeffrey Wright was here, he would agree. I am, and I do. Well, okay. I agree. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. And, 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 you know, when we talk about defining a problem and we talk about, you know, isolating on this, this issue, one thing you have to do, I think, is provide a solution. And, and to be fair, an example I would say that worked is uh, in the cartoon Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, when they introduce Kang you actually relive shot for shot scenes where Kang goes to watch an event that you've seen in an episode. Mm. But then the cool thing is, is, and one example is um, when uh, Captain America and the Howling Commandos invade uh, Red Skull's castle, um, uh, there's a moment where Kang is watching different parts of the battle and then they take out this giant troll and he's standing there watching and then he disappears and Bucky stops and looks, but Ah. the scene, but the scene in the original episode, Bucky doesn't stop and look, he keeps going. So it's, it's the little things that change the whole, the whole aspect. But I think the problem is, and, and where the, where the cartoon, where it worked was the cartoon was the same episode. Like it was all the same stuff, but they only added a scene. They added like, or sorry, they added two scenes. In the movie, the problem is is these what it with what ifs and these movies is you're just watching it from animation, so you do not have the original source. You they they trust that you know it well enough to establish that connection yourself. 
But the problem is, is that again, there's there's no resonance. There is you're you're just you're building it yourself. And as fun as that is, it doesn't feel a part of the MCU. It feels like its own thing, and that's where your disconnect is happening. Yeah, and I'm like I I think we've been trained by now to you know be able to make that connection with anime like there's some people who look at a cartoon and for whatever reason they're just like oh it's just a cartoon yeah yeah, yeah. right uh-huh. and I, I don't understand those people but like you know i can look at clone wars and appreciate it on the same level that i appreciate a new hope like it it feels part of that one big tapestry mm-hmm. uh and with what if I haven't got to that point yet where I can look at it and appreciate it as part of the MCU tapestry, especially when we've been given, you know, the bizarro stuff like Party Thor and Ant-Man killing everybody for no reason. Uh, Like that stuff really created a disconnect for me. But I think that now, and I hope that now, and I pray that now when we get to next week's episode, the way they tackle it, even if we never see the prime MCU universe. And frankly, I, I don't care if we don't. I don't think we need to. They've, there's plenty to play with already. Uh, I Even if we never see our prime universe, I will feel satisfied and I will feel that connection if they do what I think they're planning to do. Because right now, our only piece of bungee cord keeping us from plummeting into the river of the unknown is Uatu. He's connecting us to the bridge. So as long as Uatu is there, I think the best and easiest way they can make this all as cohesive as possible is just let what if be what if, but put Uatu in a movie as soon as you can in live action and have him bring this shit up and be like, you would not believe what I had to do. I played a, a card game with James Bond and then I was commissioner Gordon for a bit. And then I, I saw <laughs> Ultron. Like I want him to bring this up. And uh, then we will, we will get that feeling that what we have watched is in fact part of the tapestry, even though it's the part of the tapestry where you flip it over and you see all the stitching because that's where Uwatu lives. That's a good point, and I agree with you. I think that maybe we do need Watu in the Prime story, the Prime Earth, so that way, again, he then creates the tether that we need to branch off into what if and get a better understanding. Um, uh, I was talking, I was talking to my boy Enzo. Uh, Enzo. And Enzo, and he was saying if you he originally watched the MCU out of order. Oh, wow. But he said once, yeah, because he, he would watch it like here and there, right? Like, because he was casual. He was a casual fan. He would watch it here and there. But he pointed out something interesting was he watched the story all together as a whole now during the pandemic. And he says it makes so much sense. Like it, it sounds obvious, but once you get it, it, it does make like you see the bigger picture, right? And I think that's the problem with what if is like, what if may come before an event that will make you look at what if like, Oh, like it seems like everything's coming down on and and it, it might be a bad thing or it could be the best thing ever, but it seems like all the pressure is coming down on the multiverse of madness and no way home might be a stepping stone to the multiverse of madness and maybe give us a better sense of direction through what's going on. But it seems like Multiverse of Madness is going to be the aha moment where mm-hmm. all the puzzle, all the puzzle pieces fall into place. Um, and and now you kind of understand where the story is going, because that seems to be w- like where it is like that. The last scene we saw in What If was he talks to evil Doctor Strange. But who's to say do- good Doctor Strange is not talked to like has not talked to evil Doctor Strange and they're all working together and all this stuff. Um, So I don't know. It's possible. That Multiverse of Madness movie has so much riding on it. Yeah. It's got to, it has to deliver. And and to be fair, I'm excited. I I love Scott Derrickson. I think that's his name, the director. I love the original director. Don't Mm -hmm. get me wrong. 
he left, he even left on a good note. He said, look, I did my part. I think I did a great, like, I'm happy with what I did. Um, you know, and it's, he said it was a lot, it's a lot and it's, it is a lot of pressure. I'm happy that Sam Ramey's coming back. Cause I think he has the kind of imagination that is perfect for the multiverse theories and all that stuff. Cause if you look at his army of darkness and like evil dead and all that stuff, like it's, it, it's perfect. It fits ex- it. That kind of storytelling fits perfectly with what they're trying to do. So again, yeah, it just, but you're right. It's, it's a lot of pressure on, on multiverse to deliver at this point. It's what, it's going to be one of those things where it's all the eyes are, it's like black widow. All eyes are on black widow to kick off phase four. Is it going to, is it going to hold? And like, it's, I, uh, if I was in charge of making that movie, I would be terrified the whole time. And I feel like, I know we did a whole episode where we speculated on this, Ryan, but do you think there is any kind of world where multiverse of madness is, you know, a three hour movie? (sighs) Can you, do multiverse of madness with it not being a three hour movie with how much has been piled on top because when you know three three years two years ago when they announced that title at first we were just like it's dr strange two and he's just going to the multiverse cool that could have been a one hour 50 minute movie and then once Endgame happened, whatever, and we realized how much bigger and epicer things were getting. Epicer is not a word. Uh, how much bigger and more epic things were getting. And then we realized that they were, in fact, planning on delving into multiverse stuff. Then we were like, okay, this is going to be a two-plus-hour movie. And now, with what WandaVision did, with what Loki did, and with what What If is doing, and with what it looks like Spider-Man is doing and with what the, you know, if the wildest rumors I have heard are to be believed, what let there be carnage is doing. Can Dr. Strange and the multiverse of madness exist under three hours and do what it has to do? I don't know. I don't know because I, I'm a firm believer that a movie doesn't need to be three hours. I'm, mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't need to be. I mean, Braveheart was just too epic, you know? Um, I'm trying to think of another movie that was like three hours, and it's just like, it's cool, but like, could have been done in less. I feel like a, a Dark Knight movie could have been shorter. I can't remember which one. Oh, I love how long those movies are. I know, but like, like for example, Dark Knight is good. It's really, it's like, you know, cinematically one of the best comic book movies of all time and all this stuff. And it is perfectly in length, but I don't know if it hits the three hour mark, but it's, it's one of those things where you almost want to question how long it is, but then you easily forget it and you just go along for the ride. So I think personally me, I think that movie, a Dr. Strange multiverse of madness movie doesn't need to be three hours. It doesn't, but it's where you're spending the time because you have to remember we are still dealing with uh, Baron Mordo then apparently we might be dealing with nightmare himself. Um, and then on top of that, we're dealing with this. Apparently there's a, a scene or a, a segment, if you will, that has to do with Wanda, uh, Wanda Maximoff. So there's that story. So there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack. And then on top of that, his, his no, uh, Spider-Man no way home is, mm-hmm. is that going to, lead into the beginning of multiverse of madness and if so that story has to conclude so that's going to take time too um and uh and is dormammu still a thing like what's what's that right like there's a lot there's a lot of different things elements going on so if that's the case uh oh and then they're introducing we know for a fact they're introducing um i think her name's miss america america Uh, chavez yeah america chavez uh, she, she's got to be introduced. So she obviously needs a story and we're not getting any, um, introduction of her as far as we know, uh, right. anywhere else, anywhere else. So that's gotta, that's going to take at least a half an hour, at least, 
a half an hour. So I don't know, man. Can it be done? Should it, or sorry, should it be done in three hours? I don't think so. But will it need to? Probably, because there's a lot, a lot going on in that movie. That That's why it just, and, and you know, I don't want to be that guy who's just sitting there saying, every movie should be super long because that's how I like it. Like, I like the fact that long movies are still rare. Uh, like, no, it, like it Lord of the Rings, special. that doesn't need to be that long. It doesn't Ooh, need I, to be that I long. I disagree there, sir. I think Lord of the Rings should be... I think Lord of the Rings is too short. <laughs> I, I On could... what grounds? I mean, they did the extended edition, and that was like eight hours. I can't that... imagine a film that's that long. It's ridiculous. Oh, you need every second of it for Lord of the Rings. Um, and I, like, I, I understand that some movies don't, and I get it. Um, I mean, like, look at No Time to Die, for example. It's going to be two hours and 43 minutes, I believe. It's Whoa. the longest Bond movie to date. But it's wrapping up a five-movie story. And that's only a five-movie story. Doctor Strange has so much more on its plate. And I think the only way it could be under three, the only way is if... At some point in the creative process, they basically took a chunk of the Doctor Strange story that was supposed to be in the movie and transferred it to Spider-Man No Way Home. And basically, yeah. it's a two-part story, Spider-Man and then Doctor Strange. That's the only way I feel like they could cram that together and make it work. Um, I, But I still believe with everything that is going on, I think it's going to be longer than Spider-Man. Yeah, it's true. I don't know, man. I Personally, me, I, I think the one case I just want to make here is I don't think they need to make a three-hour movie. No. But that being said, that means they cannot waste a minute. Exactly. Like every scene, every scene, can. there should be no filler in Multiverse of Madness. No. And I think that's that's the kind of note I want to end it on with with everything that we're talking about is like I I just think that you cannot waste time with fillers at this point. And that's that's my problem with what if. There are there are episodes that feel like unnecessary fillers and because of though we're getting a lot of Marvel content, we're still getting we're not getting the whole story. We're just getting events that slowly are getting things coming closer to closer together but that being said there's no time to waste every opportunity needs to be used to deliver the experience to get us to the next part to the next event right. and that's why i think that's why people are, co are concerned with eternals for example because it's just so far out there that it's like we don't have time for this why do i need <laughs> to know why do i need to care right mm -hmm. and so i'm going to say with this last episode of what if and talking about dr strange and making sure there's no like no fillers here i am now going to stop providing fillers and say this i personally feel that the events of what if are going to relate to the eternals um and on top of that they're going to relate obviously to no way home and multiverse of madness the only thing that's not going to relate on the current path we're on is hawkeye i don't think i think hawkeye is going to be a small story building up to something later on uh that will connect everything later later on ish uh but i think if you look at the story you could look at you could look at this whole events with what if leading up to him intervening and all this stuff and then that's going to cause the because everything in what ifs about what went wrong and and what the consequences of that is but i think because there's so much wrong it's going to end up impacting the right side and something's going to happen in the end of what if that's going to show through the eternal story the origin of what that could be. Now, I could go on the Feige radar here and say, uh, you know, uh, Behold Galactus uh, is coming. 
because there was a teaser in this episode of Ultron just like eating a universe, but the yes. silhouette of him looked like Galactus. Um, and, and yeah, so he could, because what we're seeing in the story thus far with Endgame uh, is there that Thanos tried to destroy the the gauntlet and that caused a ripple in space like a you know like a shockwave uh and so i'm wondering if what if in what if that same shockwave is going to happen and then the two are going to collide uh the two shockwaves and then either create galactus or or you might actually get what you want and it creates the negative zone and through the negative zone, uh, it creates that negative zone hole, if you will. And through that, uh, either outcome in humans uh, or outcome Fantastic Four, but definitely a villain that will be an outcome of that, aside from Galactus, is, um, is Annihilus. Right. And Leslie Bibb's schedule is clear. Uh, she told me so herself. So we'll be Leslie Bibb. We're not getting no goddamn <laughs> Leslie Bibb, but we are. I think it's possible that these two waves could collide because they're they're cosmic and they span millions of you know light years and what, whatever word you use to measure the distance they span. And I I do think these two opposing forces are just gonna boom and then create whatever it, result it creates. Well, I'm definitely not going to disagree with you because last week you were right on the money and I think you are again. Um, and I, I can totally see that being something where whatever happens in the final episode of this show is what causes the Eternals to come out in the open in modern times. Because mm -hmm. uh, it looks yes. like the story is going to be a lot of them uh, like here they are, they're in ancient world coming to earth and whatever and doing whatever it is they do. And then they just kind of blend in with humans for thousands and thousands of years and they just kind of live normal lives. And then something gets them back as a team to be eternals. And I think that something is going to be either directly related to, or a, you know, a, uh, a consequence of what ends up happening in the final episode of what if mm -hmm. it feels like they live on that same cosmic path as the watcher. Like when they go jogging, the watchers jogging and they're like, Hey, Watsu, what's up? And he's like, Oh, Hey, you're just spying on you and your family. And then he keeps running. Yeah, yeah no, it's yeah, it's definitely possible, man. But, uh, I, I am actually, yeah, the way I'm seeing it, I think that when you look at Loki, Loki's events are going to impact the, like, how do I phrase this? Loki's events are going to impact kind of the, the, the Avengers kind of arc, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I think what's happening is that the events in the end of what if, and potentially the multiverse of madness and all this stuff, that's going to be like the end of the saga kind of stuff. I think what we're being teased on is like these these shows like like Loki and like um, What If, for example. I think they what they're bringing together is the villain. So you have you have the stories of like Hawkeye, Falcon, the Winter Soldier, and all that stuff. You have the stories of the heroes starting to assemble, and then you have the other side of the story is bringing the villain, and then at some point they're just gonna intersect. Ooh. Oh man, I. Can you imagine being the person in charge of plotting all of this out? Just this saga in particular, like it's well, it's obviously uh, it's obviously Feige, man. He's the one who's conducting this whole thing. Although the 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 new Marvel president, uh, uh, what's oh god, her name's escaped me at this time. I want to say Amanda, but I feel like I am horribly wrong. Don't worry, it'll take me two seconds. Uh, the did, 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 did she replace somebody? Who did she replace? I don't think she replaced somebody. Um, I don't remember hearing about this person, but like the uh, I will just say the president of um, 
the president of Marvel Studios. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not Kevin Feige. He's like the creative director of, of Marvel projects or something like that. Oh, what a job. I what know. a he's, damn job, Kevin. Living the dream, living the dream. It's not fair. Uh, uh, and uh, anyways, the, she's confirmed that there is uh, Marvel. She's working with Marvel and she's building 31 projects. Nice. 31 projects are coming. Uh, so so that's a lot. That's a lot right. of story. Um, also, quick side note, um, a quick side note on the Black Widow front that, that I do have to mention. Mm -hmm. um, the settlement has been resolved mm -hmm. and Scarlett Johansson has been quoted to say, I look forward to continuing our collaboration in years to come. So, yay. Oh, that's nice. That's yay, good. fixing up Marvel relationships because yeah, these characters are important, people. Characters are. are important and, and just as important as the actors who represent them. I'm a big believer in that. If I were an actor casted in a role as such as a Marvel hero, there's an enormous amount of responsibility, especially if you're a character from the MCU. Um, and uh, yeah, I like to see good things come out of this stuff. So I'm glad that it all worked out. Well, you are a Marvel hero. So I don't think, I, I think, I feel like the people who get cast as Marvel heroes, they come to you for like advice, like acting advice. Like, Ryan, if that were true, my friend, if that were true, my friend, I would make sure you were invited to every meeting. Oh, thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Oh, imagine going to like a meeting or like a, just like a, a party that they're all at. It'd be like the party in Age of Ultron. I'll just be like. <laughs> uh, did you hear about the, uh, there was an Easter egg and I didn't notice it but I saw something about it online today and I'm like, what? Uh, apparently there's a certain place that they go when Uwatu and Ultron are fighting and they're jumping between worlds. Uh, a certain special place that they go, a very warm place. Uh, did you hear about this? No, I, I, haven't, I haven't caught up in this yet. What did I miss? What did I miss? Tell me. So apparently, uh, allegedly... They go to hell. Do they, they go to go where Mephisto to... is? They go to a place that looks like hell, uh, but it's not hell. It is, however, the birthplace of a very hellish individual because from this screenshot that I saw, Ryan, it looks like they passed through the planet Mustafar. No. Mm -hmm. Do they really? Oh, my God. <laughs> Are they crossing the Marvel Star Wars world? Uh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know then now we're gonna have to do podcasts with the whole gang and <laughs> all right welcome to force watch rebel and in infinity uatu yoda zip zop curtis uh, goldfinger james bond 007 <laughs> everybody's in it wolverine uh yeah. <laughs> that podcast would be nauseating <laughs> it would be way too long. It's just too much content, too much speculating. That's crazy, though. That's crazy that they did that. But I, I kind of like that they tease that, too, because, I mean, we've seen Star Wars references in, like, Indiana Jones. So it's, it's mm -hmm. not out of the realm of possibility that that could happen. Yeah. If that is all we get, perfect. Perfect. It's like, yep, this is one of the multiverses. Uh, what are you going to do? But uh, the I, I just thought that was interesting when I saw it today. And I, I checked a couple of sources just to make sure it wasn't just, you know, one of those bullshit click big aggregates who was like, I'm going to try to get people to click on this. But no, a lot of people were reporting on it. So it wasn't just one idiot with uh, a we got this covered uh, freelance uh, writing gig that he had to fulfill for the month. So <laughs> we... <laughs> Uh, I, I guess uh, confirmed most of our uh, the Star Wars galaxy, or at least a version of the Star Wars galaxy, is part of the multiverse. And I think that a what-if series, an animated what-if series set in the Star Wars world would, would be a lot of fun as well, because there's a lot you can do there. And I would like that much more than this whole Visions thing that they gave us, which was just kind of, yeah. You know, it's just like, here's some off. fights. Here's some lightsaber fights. Cool. You like Jedi? Here's all the Jedi you want. 
Yeah, you're you like anime. From... Here's all the anime. There's a guy who's gonna play music on Tatooine, and everybody looks like a chibi. Okay, fine. Uh, but I think that really profound what if stories can be told there as well, and uh, maybe they'll do that someday. Yeah, but I don't know. It's just uh, you know, again, I, I'm happy this show exists, but my problem with what if is is there's so much story to tell and the fact that this is like it's part of it but it isn't and it's like eh, like like star wars visions for example we know it's not mm-hmm. what if we know it is but it doesn't feel like it is and it's it's a weird it's just a weird spot to be in um, i promise you next week it will i will, I, I will I, lay money down on that I I am I after this past episode we're on the right track and yeah. I think I think the, the the train is finally on the right tracks and we're kind of headed in the in a good direction. Um, I think personally, I I think overall this what if experience. I think it will, I think it will kind of just end on a on that was it will end on that was good, but I don't think I'll have a lasting impression with it. I I really don't. Hmm. Not well, like sure. Loki. Loki, I still yeah, go back. Like... I still go back to Loki. I'll still watch scenes from Loki because it's so good. Yeah, and I feel the same way about WandaVision too. Like I, mm-hmm. I, uh, I'm already nostalgic for WandaVision. That wasn't even a year ago, but it was like, oh my god, the beginning of just. I feel the same way about like Mandalorian episode one. Like, what's this gonna be? And just that feeling of wow, it's good, and it does this. Um, I I think what if is going to find a way to connect it because why not? Uh, And they will, if they do that, it, it it automatically bounces the show up in importance, um, which is good for those people who dismiss animation because then it'll kind of light a fire under their ass to watch this thing. Uh, So I, I really hope they do. And I, I mean, (laughs) we've got so much more coming that has to follow this multiverse track that it would be a missed opportunity for them not to lay some groundwork here, considering this is a show about the multiverse. So I think we're in good hands. I think next week we're in good hands. Uh, I only have one final question for you. And I didn't even, you know, this question is just because of what we saw in the episode. Ryan, can Uatu beat Galactus in a fight? Because this guy looks powerful. <laughs> uh, oh man, that's a tough question. Uh, I'm like, gonna say, I'm gonna say no. He can't. I don't think Watu oh, can wow. beat Galactus because because he always get Watu always gets the help of others. He's he's gotten the Fantastic Four to help him with Galactus. Yeah, um, and and even in the uh, I can't think of Marvel's comic books that come to mind, but the even in the game, um, uh, even in the game Marvel Heroes, uh, Uatu interferes, but he still requires the help of the heroes to do it. And uh, even in uh, Ultimate Alliance, the first one, he right, enlists the helps of the heroes. It's just seeing what he did, how he was able to hold his own against super mega infinity Ultron here. Like I just got me thinking if I was to throw a party at my house, but I would only invite people who could beat Uatu in a fight. I feel like it would be a very, very small party. Yeah. So like Galactus would be on the list. Uh, probably not Thanos because it looks like Thanos got his ass handed to him pretty quickly by Mega Ultron here. Who else is making this list then? Well, it's funny because I wanted to mention this in the podcast too, uh, was there was a moment, there was a moment, just a moment, small moment, in Xandar where Mm -hmm. Ultron fought this glowy figure in the sky. And I was like, oh my God, is that Nova? I thought and, it was Nova too. <laughs> and I was like, did they do it? And then and then we get the shot of Captain Marvel tackling him. And again, don't get me wrong, fans. I'm loving that we're seeing more of Captain Marvel because we don't we haven't seen enough of her and that is her problem. You know, mm-hmm. Brie, I have nothing against Brie. 
Um, I, I just don't, I don't think she had a proper story yet that it's, it's, she has the same problem as Thor. She just hasn't found the right rhythm yet. That's going to give her it's the same impact that Thor has gotten with Ragnarok. She hasn't had her, she hasn't had a Ragnarok yet. And I hope she gets it in the next film. Like, I hope she gets it fast. I, I love that, man. I, I, love, I love that phrase. She hasn't had her Ragnarok yet. That sounds like something you could say to somebody in life. You know, somebody's like, oh man, I just, I feel so down. Like, I feel like nothing's gone right for me lately. You just be like, bro, you just haven't had your Ragnarok yet. You just, yeah. just got to wait for your Ragnarok, bro. Um, <laughs> But yeah, like it's, it's great that we're seeing Captain Marvel more. Uh, but yeah, I think that Uatu, again, oh, I don't think Uatu can beat him. And that's why he's getting Doctor Strange, you know, or I think I, I would love to see him. I, I would love to see him get Doctor Doom or something like that. That'd be freaking sick. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. But or I don't know, Silver Surfer. That'd be pretty cool. Dude, I cannot wait for them to bring the Silver Surfer. I cannot wait. I just, uh, <laughs> you want to just go into a coma for like three years with me, like where we'll go cryogenically frozen and then wake up in three years and just we can get a bunch of stuff at once. <laughs> Wouldn't let's that be amazing? It, let's do it. <laughs> let's let's go. Let's let's see what the world is like in three years. It's, I just don't want it. I don't want to have happen what happened to uh, Eric Cartman in South Park. Now I'm going to say for the record. I'm not a fan of South Park. So if you're if you're gonna message us in the comments being like, oh man, you remember this episode and all that stuff, I'm gonna just totally deny, 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 deny. But I, I the funniest episode I think I ever heard about was when he went Cartman went in time ahead to get the release of the Nintendo Wii, but he went so far ahead in time that the Wii was considered like a retro console. And he was so mad. And that to me was hilarious. So I'm just worried if we do the same thing, I don't want us to have an issue where we actually go too far ahead. And then, you know, the MCU is like like a 50s film or something. Oh, my God. Imagine like we go three years in the future and there's just like a bunch of hipsters and they're like, oh, the MCU is not cool anymore, brah. Now it's all about the Dungeons and Dragons cinematic universe. Andrew ah! was right. Andrew was right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god well i you know on that on that happy note i gotta say uh i am genuinely excited uh you know now that we've talked about you being excited for james bond as someone who has grown up with comic books and cartoons and video games it's always nerve-wracking when there's an adaptation to mm -hmm. film street fighter you know, Raul Julia, God rest his soul, he carried that movie to victory as best as he could. And yet that film was very sad. Um, but then you get something like Mortal Kombat and it's fantastic and it tells you that, hey, there's promise with these movies. Now we've gotten to a point where anime still quite hasn't broken the real move, real life movie approach yet. They tried it with Death Note. It did not go well. They tried it with Ghost in the Shell, with Scar jo. It did not go well. Looked visually cool. Did not go well. Mm -hmm. Now they're trying it with Cowboy Bebop on Netflix. And oh, yeah. if you have seen the anime, the anime is like, if you have never seen an anime before and you want to get into it, you start with Cowboy Bebop because it's just so good. It's something so different. Um, and that being said, after seeing the trailer for this, I think they might have cracked the code. And I think we might start seeing some anime universes come to life from this. But it seems incredibly promising. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I've never, uh, I'm not an anime guy, so I've never bebopped with any cowboys. Um, but I imagine the whole show is just the warthog from Ninja Turtles going to line dances. Uh, because, you know, that's what they do. They line dance at the cowboy farm, at the fair, at the hay fair. Uh, and also probably somebody does an anime thing. But that's cool. I'm glad the, I'm glad that show looks promising, and I hope uh, it is, because I know there's a lot of Cowboy Bebop fans out there. Um, so I, I uh, and you're one of them, yeah. So maybe w when we uh, emerge from our cryogenic freezing in three years, you can catch up on three seasons of Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just... 
I'll just be like, where's season five of The Crown, man? That's what I'll be looking for. Uh, <laughs> British TV, I love you, but my God, you take forever. Uh, all right. So any final thoughts before we wrap up this handsome as hell episode of Infinity Rewatch? I will say this this episode has got me very excited for where the story overall is going. In terms of my experience with What If, I definitely think this is going to be one that's where I'm going to say it was good, but I'm going to look forward to the next thing as opposed to being excited about. Like, I also still linger on Shang-Chi. Like, I can't wait to watch that again. We have to wait till November 12th, but um, I can't wait to see it again and and just sit down and watch it because it, it's still i'm still thinking about it um mm-hmm. but yeah i think with what if i don't know how many times i will revisit it personally yeah i feel like um depending on what happens next episode unless they really shake things up if i do rewatch what if it'll only be captain carter strange supreme and then these last two uh, yeah. but we'll see what happens. Um, I actually, I was in the mall not too long ago and I saw Black Widow is finally out on Blu-ray. So I have to um, pick that up when I get a chance. Uh, but the thing about Blu-ray now is that they don't, uh, they don't treat it special anymore. Physical media. Uh, they don't, uh, they don't take care with it like they used to. And it's a shame because I'm an old school physical media guy. And I like when a nice, uh, Blu-ray comes out or a nice DVD comes out and it's got like beautiful packaging and lots of special features and that never seems to be the case anymore and the Black Widow packaging looked pretty bland so maybe I'll have to find one somewhere else that's got like a special thing or something but uh, if anybody knows of that especially you Americans because you guys always get all the cool shit let us know because up here in Canada we literally just you know it's one cheap photo of Black Widow with like a French title and then you're lucky if you get a trailer on the blu-ray so we'll see what happens uh but i am i'm uh i'm really i have a positive outlook for what if and i think that this show ending as this sounds mean and i don't mean it to be mean but this show ending gets me really excited because it feels like we're that much closer to eternals and then hawkeye and then spider-man and then doctor strange and the three-hour adventure uh, of madness so um i'm i'm excited for this to end and i'm excited for the mcu to move forward and see these 31 other projects that we don't know about yet oh boy we're getting there well uh where can the people find you ryan until then uh for now you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash xbox canada and uh you can also find me on instagram which starting next month i will be very i'll be a lot more active so be prepared for that. So you can find me on Instagram at the Ryan J Whitehead, and you can also find me on Twitter at Crusader Online. Very nice. And you can find me trying to guess what the other thirty-one projects are. I'm thinking we've got Captain Marvel goes Hawaiian. Um, we've got uh, let's see, um, uh, Doctor Strange meets Abbott and Costello, uh, mm-hmm. Spider Man, and the ASTM standards for bias and precision in various applications. It's going to be a big one. Uh, Hulk and maybe PI. Hulk PI, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I think that that'll, that'll, I mean, there's only, you can only go up from there. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, on Instagram, you can find me at Andrew Fantasia and on YouTube at the Andrew Fantasia channel, where I am counting down to Bond 25. We're in the middle of our countdown right now. We just did uh, this morning, we just did Golden Eye. <laughs> The oh, best movie. Boy. The best James Bond movie <laughs> ever made. Is that your favorite and, one? No. That is, you know what? Yeah, it is. It is that freaking good. It is. It spawned the best console shooter ever made <laughs> in the history of console shooters. And, oh man, where do I go from here? Uh, and it had some of the most iconic James Bond characters that people will still quote today. I am invincible. It's like the best. It is yeah. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a golden eye quote, and I want you to finish it. Okay. Okay. Better luck next time. Slugheads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Next week, our our podcast is just going to be about Goldeneye. <laughs> you, you sit on it, but you can't take it with you. <laughs> My knee aches every single day. Twice as much when it is cold. Do you have any idea how long the winter lasts in this country? Do you? Tell him, Dimitri. Well, it, it depends. Silence! <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, I love, not only that, he's like, who's strangling the cat? <laughs> <laughs> that is Elena, my mistress. <laughs> Elena, take care. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, next week is just going to be all golden eye because why not? <laughs> We just quote. We'll just do quotes. We'll actually just read the entire script of the movie. That's what oh, we'll do. Yeah, we'll do a table read. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Stand by your mask. <laughs> uh, until we do get to GoldenEye, I hope everybody has a marvelous winter. Do you have any idea how long winter lasts in this country? Huh? Tell them, Ryan. <laughs> Well, it just, you know, it depends. Silence! Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.